The Colosseum, is an oval amphitheatre in the centre of the city of Rome, Italy, just east of the Roman Forum, and is the largest ancient amphitheatre ever built. Construction began under the Emperor Vespasian in 72 and was completed in AD 80 under his successor and heir, Titus. Further modifications were made, during the reign of Domitian. The three emperors that were patrons of the work are known as the Flavian dynasty, and the amphitheatre was named the Flavian Amphitheatre, by later classicists and archaeologists, for its association with their family name. The Colosseum is built of travertine limestone, tough, and brick-faced concrete. The Colosseum could hold an estimated 50,000 to 80,000 spectators at various points of its history over the centuries, having an average audience of some 65,000, it was used for gladiatorial contests and public spectacles such as mock sea battles, animal hunts, executions, reenactments of famous battles, and dramas based on Roman mythology. The building ceased to be used for entertainment in the early medieval era. It was later reused for such purposes as housing, workshops, quarters for a religious order, a fortress, a quarry, and a Christian shrine. Although substantially ruined because of earthquakes and stone robbers, the Colosseum is still an iconic symbol of Imperial Rome, and was listed as one of the new Seven Wonders of the World. It is one of Rome's most popular tourist attractions and also has links to the Roman Catholic Church, as each Good Friday the Pope leads a torchlit way of the cross procession that starts in the area around the Colosseum. The Colosseum is also depicted on the Italian version of the five cent euro coin. Chapter 1, Name Originally, the building's Latin name was simply the Latin, Amphitheatrum, lit. Amphitheater. Though the modern name Flavian Amphitheater is often used, there is no evidence it was used in classical antiquity. This name refers to the patronage of the Flavian dynasty, during whose reigns the building was constructed, but the structure is better known as the Colosseum. In antiquity, Romans may have referred to the Colosseum by the unofficial name Amphitheatrum Caesarium, but this name may have been strictly poetic as it was not exclusive to the Colosseum. Vespasian and Titus, builders of the Colosseum, also constructed an Flavian amphitheatre in Puteoli. The name Colosseum for the amphitheatre is attested from the 6th century, during late antiquity. The name Colosseum is believed to be derived from a colossal statue of Nero on the model of the Colossus of Rhodes. The giant bronze sculpture of Nero as a solar deity was moved to its position beside the amphitheatre by the Emperor Hadrian. The word Colosseum is a neuter Latin noun formed from the adjective Colosseus, meaning gigantic or Colosseum. By the year 1000 the Latin name Colosseum had been coined to refer to the amphitheatre from the nearby Colossus Solis. The spelling was sometimes altered in medieval Latin, Colosseum and Colosseum are attested from the 12th and 14th centuries respectively. In the 12th century, the structure was recorded as the Amphitheatrum Colossae, Amphitheatre of the Colossus. In the High Middle Ages, the Flavian Amphitheatre is attested as the late 13th century Old French, Colosse, and in Middle French as, Colisse by the early 16th century, by which time the word could be applied to any amphitheatre. From Middle French, Calice derived the Middle English, Calice, in use by the middle of the 15th century and employed by John Capgrave in his Solace of Pilgrims, in which he remarked, Middle English, Calice is a marvelous place, the most part of it stant at this day. An English translation by John Boucher, second Baron Berners of Antonio de Guevara's biography of Marcus Aurelius in about 1533 referred to Middle English, this emperor, Vange with the Senate at Colisee. Similarly, the Italian, Colosseo, or Colosseo, are attested as referring first to the amphitheatre in Rome, and then to any amphitheatre. By 1460, an equivalent existed in Catalan, Colisio, by 1495 had appeared the Spanish, Colosseo, and by 1548 the Portuguese, Colisio. The earliest citation for the name Colosseum in early modern English is the 1600 translation, by Philemon Holland, of the Ubis Romae Topographia of Bartolomeo Marliani, 
which he used in the preparation of his translation of Livy's Augustan era Ab Urbe Condita Libri. The text states, This amphitheatre was commonly called Colosseum, of Nero's Colossus, which was set up in the porch of Nero's house. Similarly, John Evelyn, translating the Middle French name, the Colisse used by the architectural theorist Roland Friart de Chambray, wrote, and tis indeed a kind of miracle to see that the Colosseum, and innumerable other structures which seemed to have been built for eternity, should be at present so ruinous and dilapidated. After Nero's suicide and the civil wars of the year of the four emperors, the Colossus of Nero was remodeled by the condemned emperor's successors into the likeness of Helios or Apollo, the sun god, by adding the appropriate solar crown. It was then commonly referred to as the Colossus Solis. Nero's head was also replaced several times with the heads of succeeding emperors. Despite its pagan links, the statue remained standing well into the medieval era, and was credited with magical powers. It came to be seen as an iconic symbol of the permanence of Rome. The Emperor Constantine the Great remodeled the statue's face as his own dot in the 8th century, an epigram attributed to the Venerable Bede celebrated the symbolic significance of the statue in a prophecy that is variously quoted, Quamdu stat Colosseus, stat et Roma, quando cadet Colosseus, cadet et Roma, quando cadet Roma, cadet et Mundus. This is often mistranslated to refer to the Colosseum rather than the Colossus. However, at the time that the pseudo Bede wrote, the masculine noun Colosseus was applied to the statue rather than to the amphitheater. The Colossus did eventually fall, possibly being pulled down to reuse its bronze. The statue itself was largely forgotten and only its base survives, between the Colosseum and the nearby Temple of Venus and Roma. Chapter 2 History Chapter 3 Section 1 Construction, Inauguration, and Roman Renovations the site chosen was a flat area on the floor of a low valley between the Celian, Esquiline, and Palatine hills, through which a canalized stream ran as well as an artificial lake-slash-marsh. By the 2nd century BC the area was densely inhabited. It was devastated by the Great Fire of Rome in 64 AD, following which Nero seized much of the area to add to his personal domain. He built the Grandiose Domus Aurea on the site, in front of which he created an artificial lake surrounded by pavilions, gardens and porticos. The existing Aqua Claudia aqueduct was extended to supply water to the area, and the gigantic bronze colossus of Nero was set up nearby at the entrance to the Domus Aurea. Although the colossus was preserved, much of the Domus Aurea was torn down. The lake was filled in and the land reused as the location for the new Flavian amphitheatre. Gladiatorial schools and other support buildings were constructed nearby within the former grounds of the Domus Aurea. Vespasian's decision to build the Colosseum on the site of Nero's lake can be seen as a populist gesture of returning to the people an area of the city which Nero had appropriated for his own use. In contrast to many other amphitheaters, which were on the outskirts of a city, the Colosseum was constructed in the city centre, in effect, placing it both symbolically and precisely at the heart of Rome. Construction was funded by the opulent spoils taken from the Jewish temple after the First Jewish-Roman War in 70 CE, led to the siege of Jerusalem. According to a reconstructed inscription found on the site, the Emperor Vespasian ordered this new amphitheatre to be erected from his general's share of the booty. It is often assumed that Jewish prisoners of war were brought back to Rome and contributed to the massive workforce needed for the construction of the amphitheatre, but there is no ancient evidence for that, it would, nonetheless, be commensurate with Roman practice to add humiliation to the defeated population. Along with this free source of unskilled labour, teams of professional Roman builders, engineers, artists, Painters and decorators undertook the more specialized tasks necessary for building the Colosseum. The Colosseum was constructed with several different materials, wood, limestone, tuff, tiles, cement, and mortar. Construction of the Colosseum began under the rule of Vespasian in around 70-72 AD. The Colosseum had been completed up to the third story by the time of Vespasian's death in 79. 
The top level was finished by his son, Titus, in 80, and the inaugural games were held in 80 or 81 AD. Dio Cassius recounts that over 9,000 wild animals were killed during the inaugural games of the amphitheater. Commemorative coinage was issued celebrating the inauguration. The building was remodeled further under Vespasian's younger son, the newly designated Emperor Domitian, who constructed the Hypogeum, a series of tunnels used to house animals and slaves. He also added a gallery to the top of the Colosseum to increase its seating capacity. In 217, the Colosseum was badly damaged by a major fire which destroyed the wooden upper levels of the amphitheater's interior. It was not fully repaired until about 240 and underwent further repairs in 250 or 252 and again in 320. Honorius banned the practice of gladiator fights in 399 and again in 404. Gladiatorial fights are last mentioned around 435. An inscription records the restoration of various parts of the Colosseum under Theodosius II and Valentinian III, possibly to repair damage caused by a major earthquake in 443, more work followed in 484 and 508. The arena continued to be used for contests well into the 6th century. Animal hunts continued until at least 523, when Anicius Maximus celebrated his consulship with some Venations, criticized by King Theodoric the Great for their high cost. Chapter 3 Section 2 Medieval The Colosseum underwent several radical changes of use. By the late 6th century a small chapel had been built into the structure of the amphitheater, though this apparently did not confer any particular religious significance on the building as a whole. The arena was converted into a cemetery. The numerous vaulted spaces in the arcades under the seating were converted into housing and workshops, and are recorded as still being rented out as late as the 12th century. Around 1200 the Frangipani family took over the Colosseum and fortified it, apparently using it as a castle. Severe damage was inflicted on the Colosseum by the Great Earthquake in 1349, causing the outer south side, lying on a less stable alluvial terrain, to collapse. Much of the tumbled stone was reused to build palaces, churches, hospitals and other buildings elsewhere in Rome. A religious order moved into the northern third of the Colosseum in the mid-14th century and continued to inhabit it until as late as the early 19th century. The interior of the amphitheater was extensively stripped of stone, which was reused elsewhere, or was burned to make quicklime. The bronze clamps which held the stonework together were pried or hacked out of the walls, leaving numerous pockmarks which still scar the building today. Chapter 3 Section 3 Modern During the 16th and 17th century, church officials sought a productive role for the Colosseum. Pope Sixtus V planned to turn the building into a wool factory to provide employment for Rome's prostitutes, though this proposal fell through with his premature death. In 1671 Cardinal Alti authorized its use for bullfights, a public outcry caused the idea to be hastily abandoned. In 1749, Pope Benedict XIV endorsed the view that the Colosseum was a sacred site where early Christians had been martyred. He forbade the use of the Colosseum as a quarry and consecrated the building to the Passion of Christ and installed Stations of the Cross, declaring it sanctified by the blood of the Christian martyrs who perished there. However, there is no historical evidence to support Benedict's claim, nor is there even any evidence that anyone before the 16th century suggested this might be the case, the Catholic Encyclopedia concludes that there are no historical grounds for the supposition, other than the reasonably plausible conjecture that some of the many martyrs may well have been. Later popes initiated various stabilization and restoration projects, removing the extensive vegetation which had overgrown the structure and threatened to damage it further. The façade was reinforced with triangular brick wedges in 1807 and 1827, and the interior was repaired in 1831, 1846 and in the 1930s. 
The arena substructure was partly excavated in 1810 to 1814 and 1874 and was fully exposed under Benito Mussolini in the 1930s. The Colosseum is today one of Rome's most popular tourist attractions, receiving millions of visitors annually. The effects of pollution and general deterioration over time prompted a major restoration program carried out between 1993 and 2000, at a cost of 40 billion Italian lira. In recent years, the Colosseum has become a symbol of the international campaign against capital punishment, which was abolished in Italy in 1948. Several anti-death penalty demonstrations took place in front of the Colosseum in 2000. Since that time, as a gesture against the death penalty, the local authorities of Rome changed the color of the Colosseum's nighttime illumination from white to gold whenever a person condemned to the death penalty anywhere in the world gets their sentence commuted or is released, or if a jurisdiction abolishes the death penalty. Most recently, the Colosseum was illuminated in gold in November 2012 following the abolishment of capital punishment in the American state of Connecticut in April 2012. Because of the ruined state of the interior, it is impractical to use the Colosseum to host large events, only a few hundred spectators can be accommodated in temporary seating. However, much larger concerts have been held just outside, using the Colosseum as a backdrop. Performers who have played at the Coliseum in recent years have included Ray Charles, Paul McCartney, Elton John, and Billy Joel. Chapter 3 – Physical Description Chapter 4 – Section 1 – Exterior Unlike earlier Greek theatres that were built into hillsides, the Coliseum is an entirely freestanding structure. It derives its basic exterior and interior architecture from that of two Roman theatres back to back. It is elliptical in plan and is 189 metres long, and 156 metres wide, with a base area of 24,000 square metres. The height of the outer wall is 48 metres. The perimeter originally measured 545 metres. The central arena, is an oval 87 meters long and 55 meters wide, surrounded by a wall 5 meters high, above which rose tiers of seating. The outer wall is estimated to have required over 100,000 cubic meters of travertine stone which were set without mortar, they were held together by 300 tons of iron clamps. However, it has suffered extensive damage over the centuries, with large segments having collapsed following earthquakes. The north side of the perimeter wall is still standing, the distinctive triangular brick wedges at each end are modern additions, having been constructed in the early 19th century to shore up the wall. The remainder of the present-day exterior of the Colosseum, is in fact the original interior wall. The surviving part of the outer wall's monumental facade comprises three stories of superimposed arcades, surmounted by a podium on which stands a tall attic, both of which are pierced by windows interspersed at regular intervals. The arcades are framed by half-columns of the Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian orders, while the attic is decorated with Corinthian pilasters. Each of the arches in the second and third floor arcades framed statues, probably honoring divinities and other figures from classical mythology. 240 mast corbels were positioned around the top of the attic. They originally supported a retractable awning, known as the velarium, that kept the sun and rain off spectators. This consisted of a canvas-covered, net-like structure made of ropes, with a hole in the center. It covered two-thirds of the arena, and sloped down towards the center to catch the wind and provide a breeze for the audience. Sailors, specially enlisted from the Roman naval headquarters at Misenum, and housed in the nearby Castra Misenitium, were used to work the velarium. The Colosseum's huge crowd capacity made it essential that the venue could be filled or evacuated quickly. Its architects adopted solutions very similar to those used in modern stadiums to deal with the same problem. The amphitheater was ringed by 80 entrances at ground level, 76 of which were used by ordinary spectators. Each entrance and exit was numbered, as was each staircase. The northern main entrance was reserved for the Roman Emperor and his aides, 
whilst the other three axial entrances were most likely used by the elite. All four axial entrances were richly decorated with painted stucco reliefs, of which fragments survive. Many of the original outer entrances have disappeared with the collapse of the perimeter wall, but entrances 23 to Lee I survived. Spectators were given tickets in the form of numbered pottery shards, which directed them to the appropriate section and row. They accessed their seats via vomitoria, passageways that opened into a tier of seats from below or behind. These quickly dispersed people into their seats and, upon conclusion of the event or in an emergency evacuation, could permit their exit within only a few minutes. The name vomitoria derived from the Latin word for a rapid discharge, from which English derives the word vomit. Chapter 4 Section 2 Interior Seating According to the Codex Calendar of 354, the Colosseum could accommodate 87,000 people, although modern estimates put the figure at around 50,000. They were seated in a tiered arrangement that reflected the rigidly stratified nature of Roman society. Special boxes were provided at the north and south ends respectively for the Emperor and the Vestal Virgins, providing the best views of the arena. Flanking them at the same level was a broad platform or podium for the senatorial class, who were allowed to bring their own chairs. The names of some 5th century senators can still be seen carved into the stonework, presumably reserving areas for their use. The tier above the senators, known as the Menium Primum, was occupied by the non-senatorial noble class or knights. The next level up, the Menium Secundum, was originally reserved for ordinary Roman citizens, and was divided into two sections. The lower part was for wealthy citizens, while the upper part was for poor citizens. Specific sectors were provided for other social groups, for instance, boys with their tutors, soldiers on leave, foreign dignitaries, scribes, heralds, priests and so on. Stone seating was provided for the citizens and nobles, who presumably would have brought their own cushions with them. Inscriptions identified the areas reserved for specific groups. Another level, the Menium Secundum in Legnes, was added at the very top of the building during the reign of Domitian. This comprised a gallery for the common poor, slaves and women. It would have been either standing room only, or would have had very steep wooden benches. Some groups were banned altogether from the Colosseum, notably gravediggers, actors and former gladiators. Each tier was divided into sections by curved passages and low walls, and were subdivided into kunai, or wedges, by the steps and aisles from the vomitoria. Each row of seats was numbered, permitting each individual seat to be exactly designated by its gradus, cuneus, and number. Chapter 4 Section 3, Arena and Hypogeum The arena itself was 83 meters by 48 meters. It comprised a wooden floor covered by sand, covering an elaborate underground structure called the hypogeum. The hypogeum was not part of the original construction but was ordered to be built by Emperor Domitian. Little now remains of the original arena floor, but the hypogeum is still clearly visible. It consisted of a two-level subterranean network of tunnels and cages beneath the arena where gladiators and animals were held before contests began. Eighty vertical shafts provided instant access to the arena for caged animals and scenery pieces concealed underneath, larger hinge platforms, called hegmata, provided access for elephants and the like. It was restructured on numerous occasions, at least, twelve different phases of construction can be seen. The hypogeum was connected by tunnels to a number of points outside the Colosseum. Animals and performers were brought through the tunnel from nearby stables, with the gladiator's barracks at the Ludus Magnus to the east also being connected by tunnels. Separate tunnels were provided for the Emperor and the Vestal Virgins to permit them to enter and exit the Colosseum without needing to pass through the crowds. Substantial quantities of machinery also existed in the Hypogeum. Elevators and pulleys raised and lowered scenery and props, as well as lifting caged animals to the surface for release. There is evidence for the existence of major hydraulic mechanisms, and according to ancient accounts, it was possible to flood the arena rapidly 
presumably via connection to a nearby aqueduct. However, the construction of the hypogeum at Domitian's behest put an end to the practice of flooding, and thus also to naval battles, early in the Colosseum's existence. Chapter 4 Section 4 Supporting Buildings The Colosseum and its activities supported a substantial industry in the area. In addition to the amphitheatre itself, many other buildings nearby were linked to the games. Immediately to the east is the remains of the Ludus Magnus, a training school for gladiators. This was connected to the Colosseum by an underground passage, to allow easy access for the gladiators. The Ludus Magnus had its own miniature training arena, which was itself a popular attraction for Roman spectators. Other training schools were in the same area, including the Ludus Matutinus, where fighters of animals were trained, plus the Dacian and Gallic schools. Also nearby were the Armamentarium, comprising an armory to store weapons, the Summum Corrigium, where machinery was stored, the Sanitarium, which had facilities to treat wounded gladiators, and the Spoliarium, where bodies of dead gladiators were stripped of their armor and disposed of. Around the perimeter of the Colosseum, at a distance of 18 meters from the perimeter, was a series of tall stone posts, with five remaining on the eastern side. Various explanations have been advanced for their presence, they may have been a religious boundary, or an outer boundary for ticket checks, or an anchor for the velarium or awning. Right next to the Colosseum is also the Arch of Constantine. Chapter 4 Use The Colosseum was used to host gladiatorial shows as well as a variety of other events. The shows, called Monera, were always given by private individuals rather than the state. They had a strong religious element but were also demonstrations of power and family prestige, and were immensely popular with the population. Another popular type of show, was the animal hunt, or venatio. This utilized a great variety of wild beasts, mainly imported from Africa and the Middle East, and included creatures such as rhinoceros, hippopotamuses, elephants, giraffes, aurochs, wizants, barbary lions, panthers, leopards, bears, Caspian tigers, crocodiles and ostriches. Battles and hunts were often staged amid elaborate sets with movable trees and buildings. Such events were occasionally on a huge scale, Trajan is said to have celebrated his victories in Darcia in 107 with contests involving 11,000 animals and 10,000 gladiators over the course of 123 days. During lunch intervals, executions at Bestius would be staged. Those condemned to death would be sent into the arena, naked and unarmed, to face the beasts of death which would literally tear them to pieces. Other performances would also take place by acrobats and magicians, typically during the intervals. During the early days of the Colosseum, ancient writers recorded that the building was used for Normaki or simulated sea battles. Accounts of the inaugural games held by Titus in AD 80 describe it being filled with water for a display of specially trained swimming horses and bulls. There is also an account of a reenactment of a famous sea battle between the Corsarian Greeks and the Corinthians. This has been the subject of some debate among historians, although providing the water would not have been a problem, it is unclear how the arena could have been waterproofed, nor would there have been enough space in the arena for the warships to move around. It has been suggested that the reports either have the location wrong, or that the Colosseum originally featured a wide floodable channel down its central axis. Sylvie or recreations of natural scenes were also held in the arena. Painters, technicians and architects would construct a simulation of a forest with real trees and bushes planted in the arena's floor, and animals would then be introduced. Such scenes might be used simply to display a natural environment for the urban population, or could otherwise be used as the backdrop for hunts or dramas depicting episodes from mythology. They were also occasionally used for executions in which the hero of the story, played by a condemned person, was killed in one of various gruesome but mythologically authentic ways, such as being mauled by beasts or burned to death. Chapter 5 Section 1 Today 
The Colosseum today is now a major tourist attraction in Rome with thousands of tourists each year entering to view the interior arena. There is now a museum dedicated to Eros in the upper floor of the outer wall of the building. Part of the arena floor has been re-floored. Beneath the Colosseum, a network of subterranean passageways once used to transport wild animals and gladiators to the arena open to the public in summer 2000, and 10. The Colosseum is also the site of Roman Catholic ceremonies in the 20th and 21st centuries. For instance, Pope Benedict XVI led the Stations of the Cross called the Scriptural Way of the Cross at the Colosseum on Good Fridays. Chapter 5 Section 2 Subsection 1 Restoration In 2011 Diego de la Valle, head of the shoe firm Todd's, entered into an agreement with local officials to sponsor a 25 million euros restoration of the Colosseum. Work was planned to begin at the end of 2011, taking up to two and a half years. Due to the controversial nature of using a public-private partnership to fund the restoration, work was delayed and began in 2013. The restoration is the first full cleaning and repair in the Colosseum's history. The first stage is to clean and restore the Colosseum's arcaded façade and replace the metal enclosures that block the ground-level arches. Taking three years, the final product of this work was unveiled 1 July 2016, when the Italian Minister of Culture, Dario Franceschini, also announced that the funds have been committed to replace the floors by the end of 2018. These will provide a stage that Franceschini says will be used for cultural events of the highest level. The project also plans to create a services center and to restore the galleries and underground spaces inside the Colosseum. New to tours of the restored marvel beginning 1 November 2017, the top two levels have been open for guided visits. The fourth level held the marketplace, and the top fifth tier is where the poorest citizens, the plebeians, gathered and watched the show, bringing picnics for the day-long event. Chapter 5, Significance in Christianity The Colosseum is generally regarded by Christians as a site of the martyrdom of large numbers of believers during the persecution of Christians in the Roman Empire as evidenced by church history and tradition. On the other hand, other scholars believe that the majority of martyrdoms may have occurred at other venues within the city of Rome, rather than at the Colosseum, citing a lack of still intact physical evidence or historical records. These scholars assert that some Christians were executed as common criminals in the Colosseum, their crime being refusal to reverence the Roman gods, but most Christian martyrs of the early church were executed for their faith at the Circus Maximus. According to Irenaeus, Ignatius of Antioch was fed to the lions in Rome around 107 AD, and although Irenaeus says nothing about this happening at the Colosseum, tradition ascribes it to that place. In the Middle Ages, the Colosseum was not regarded as a monument, and was used as what some modern sources label a quarry, which is to say that stones from the Colosseum were taken for the building of other sacred sites. This fact is used to support the idea that, at a time when sites associated with martyrs were highly venerated the Colosseum was not being treated as a sacred site. It was not included in the itineraries compiled for the use of pilgrims nor in works such as the 12th century Mirabilia Urbis Romae, which claims the Circus Flaminius, but not the Colosseum, as the site of martyrdoms. Part of the structure was inhabited by a Christian religious order, but it is not known whether this was for any particular religious reason. Pope Pius V is said to have recommended that pilgrims gather sand from the arena of the Colosseum to serve as a relic, on the grounds that it was impregnated with the blood of martyrs, although some of his contemporaries did not share his conviction. A century later Fioravanti Martinelli listed the Colosseum at the head of a list of places sacred to the martyrs in his 1653 book Roma ex Ethnica Sacra. Martinelli's book evidently had an effect on public opinion, in response to Cardinal Alti's proposal some years later to turn the Colosseum into a bullring. Carlo Tomasi published a pamphlet in protest against what he regarded as an act of desecration. The ensuing controversy persuaded Pope Clement X to close the Colosseum's external arcades and declare it a sanctuary. At the insistence of St. Leonard of Port Morris, Pope Benedict XIV forbade the quarrying of the Colosseum, 
and erected stations of the cross around the arena, which remained until February 1874. Benedict Joseph Labra spent the later years of his life within the walls of the Colosseum, living on arms, before he died in 1783. Several 19th-century popes funded repair and restoration work on the Colosseum, and it still retains its Christian connection today. A Christian cross stands in the Colosseum, with a plaque, stating. The amphitheater, one consecrated to triumphs, entertainments, and the impious worship of pagan gods, is now dedicated to the sufferings of the martyrs purified from impious superstitions. Other Christian crosses stand in several points around the arena and every Good Friday the Pope leads a via crucis procession to the amphitheater. Chapter 6, Flora The Colosseum has a wide and well-documented history of flora ever since Domenico Panarelli made the first catalogue of its plants in 1643. Since then, 684 species have been identified there. The peak was in 1855. Attempts were made in 1871 to eradicate the vegetation, because of concerns over the damage that was being caused to the masonry, but much of it has returned. 242 species have been counted today, and of the species first identified by Panarelli, 200 remain. The variation of plants can be explained by the change of climate in Rome through the centuries. Additionally, bird migration, flower blooming, and the growth of Rome that caused the Colosseum to become embedded within the modern city centre rather than on the outskirts of the ancient city, as well as deliberate transport of species, are also contributing causes. Another reason often given is their seeds being unwittingly transported either on the fur or in the feces of animals brought there from all corners of the empire. Chapter 7, Works Modelled on, or Inspired by, the Colosseum The Congress Halle, or Congress Hall, at the Nazi Party Rally Grounds, Nuremberg, Germany The Summer Olympic Games medal from 1928 to 2000, designed by Giuseppe Cassioli, features a depiction of the Colosseum. At the 2004 Summer Olympics in Athens the Colosseum was replaced by a depiction of the Panathinaikos Stadium. The exterior of the Vancouver Public Library in British Columbia resembles the current state of the Colosseum. It was designed by Moshe Safdie. The Los Angeles Memorial Colosseum entrance was inspired by the Colosseum. The Palazzo della Civiltà Italiana was very closely modeled on the Colosseum. It was built for Mussolini for the Universal Exhibition of 1942, but the exhibition never happened due to the outbreak of World War II. The architects were Giovanni Guerini, Ernesto Bruno La Pardula, and Mario Romano. McCaig's Tower, Overlooking Oban, Scotland. Chapter 8, Popular Culture References the iconic status of the Colosseum has led it to be featured in numerous films, such as Roman Holiday, Demetrius and the Gladiators, 20 Million Miles to Earth, Way of the Dragon, Gladiator, Megiddo, The Omega Code 2, The Core, The Lizzie McGuire Movie, Jumper, and the animated movie Madagascar 3, Europe's Most Wanted. It was also featured in the 1998 The Rise of Rome expansion for the video game Age of Empires, and in the 2010 video game Assassin's Creed, Brotherhood. The finale of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Vento Oreo, in both the anime and manga, takes place in the Colosseum.